Talking Basketball Podcast. Hello, welcome to another edition of the Talking Basketball Podcast. I am Mark. I am Paul. Hello. Hello, hello. We're back again for another edition. This is the second episode the Great second tune, that, of the it? second season. If you haven't gone and listened to our first season, where have you been? Welcome to the party. Go back and listen to some of the cool interviews. We've got some good ones, haven't we? We've got some really, really good interviews that Classics. We, we personally enjoyed. Not just because the people were great, but there's some heroes that we met. It's fantastic to go check them out. But this week, what have we got coming up, Paul? But don't ask me questions no. while I'm mixing. He's multitasking. Just ask his wife. You can't do that. <laughs> there we go. Um, look, we before we go anywhere, yes. shout out to the listeners. If there's any topics that they want us to talk about. Oh, 100%. Some of the ones I've been reading are great ideas. Like one guy mentioned about all-time greatest logos. Yep. What a great idea. The kits, obviously, that's a good one. Another one I was talking to about um, best basketball shoes of all time. Ooh. That's a good one. I could do the best. I could do the most, uh, uh, most um, recognizable shoe. That actually wasn't a very good shoe. And that was the AM1 Tai Chi. Because that was the one that Vince Carter wore at the dunk competition. And that was the AM1 oh, okay. Tai Chi. And it you looked at it and you went, oh, that's a recognizable shoe, but actually they were not very comfortable at all. Your brother had them. I'm sure he had those, but they were not very comfy at all. But yes. Multitasking here. Hey look, Mark, before we go anywhere. The first thing we got to talk about, and I do wonder if, if we are part of the contributing factor to this, because we've been talking about this. I've got to give this out to the Super League Basketball Organization. <laughs> no. If you had any doubts about the organization and where they're going, yep. Look what they've just done for the cup. Yep. We said it. What's so great about the FA Cup? The little guys can take on the big guys. So what have they done? Seven in. There's seven in. Five from the UK, two from Scotland. Scotland. So you got Derby Trailblazers, day one, Div one last year. Yes. Essex Rebels, Hemel Storm, Nottingham Hoods, Reading Rockets. All teams we recognize. Yep. Um, the Falkirk Fury, one of my personal favorites. I'm going to be rooting for those guys. The only reason I root for those guys really is because I don't know if you can see it over there. Can they see that? Not quite. If we move the cameras, we might better see it. But basically, we used to play for a team called the Fury. Well, still do. And if I do that, is it on there yet? No, move it up a little bit. Tilt it backwards. There you go. There Fury. they are. Can you see it? That's the one. That's the Fury one. <laughs> uh, there you go. Is that where it was? There we go. Okay, and then you've got St. Saint, Saint Mirren as well uh, from, from Scotland Basketball. But what is great about it and what I love about that is the little guys get to take on yes. the big boys. Oh, 100%. And that's what it's all about. It says that romanticism, they've just injected it into the Basketball UK community. Yep. And I love about that. That is the greatest thing they've done so far personally as far as competitions, I think. Uh, got a little quote for you here. Yep. The quote was, um, we are thrilled to welcome seven great teams from both the NBL and SBC to the cup lineup. Their inclusion not only adds a new level of excitement and intrigue to the competition, but highlights the depth and talent across British basketball. But for those who don't know, there's nine teams currently at the moment in the SLB. You're adding seven more, which brings it up to... Yeah, 16. So, it's, yeah, there's your 16. Yeah. But... So that's your knockout. I'm assuming it's a knockout round then... Well, I'm... I'm yeah, but I'm looking bigger than that. 16 teams. That would mean that you've got three teams in Scotland... And the remainder, the other 13 are in the UK. Or in, they're all in the UK, but they're in England. Is this a tester 
for next I hope, season. I hope so. I, I, that's I what, love that's the, the idea. That's the first thing I saw that when they're like, oh, they let them in. You go, interesting. As soon as they announced it, I've li- you've literally, someone's just thrown a ball and the SLB owners, organisers have just gone yep. and just knocked it out the park. Yep, that is amazing. And look, one of those guys is going to upset someone, but that is what's so Ooh. great about it. Yeah. And I hope it's the Fury. The Fury. Hey, Falkirk Fury. Falkirk Fury and the Ports of Fury, they should be like sister teams or something like that. If someone from Falkirk Fury is listening to this. We love you. Hey, I tagged someone earlier the other day and flipping Instagram went, oh, you're not allowed to tag them uh, because it's soliciting. Yeah. Okay. Stop soliciting, Mark. What? I was reaching out saying, hey, good job. Come on the show. That's all I put. And they removed it, the context. They said we're advertising ourselves on someone else's post. You're like, no. You got. To, you need. You need to talk more <laughs> to the youth, Mark. Then it'll work. Uh, Just walk in and be like, it's gonna be hot tour. Follow Giga Chads, mocking hard or hardly risen, and they'll go, yeah, brilliant. What? <laughs> I know they were words, <laughs> but that was not a sentence. Mark, that is the youth today. It is. As um, well as everyone can see. The fact that you don't know it says that that's We cap. are not youthful. That's cap, Mark. <laughs> you say that to a young person, they're like, oh, please. No cap. That's like the equivalent of like when we were younger going, yeah, that's sick. Yeah. And then the people, older generation look at you like, what? Yeah. Anyway, so look, they knocked it out the park. That's an absolute home run. Yeah, and definitely. I cannot wait for the cup now i cannot wait for the cup no um so, so yeah so what i f- thought was interesting about it is because they've got the cup and they're doing those bits that's all well and interesting but what is going to happen in terms of some of the teams are going to have more play time than others um inevitably at the end of the season for what well you've got the trophy, which they're currently playing at the moment. We're going to talk about that in a set, but you've got the trophy. Then you've got the cup, which is this. Obviously, yeah. obviously, the championship's going on in between those as well. And then you have a playoffs at the end. That's professional sporting. I get it, but thing. what I'm interested in... The higher up you go, the more games you get. Yeah, but some of these teams also are playing in Europe. And some of these players are also playing on the GB team. So what's really, really fascinating is you suddenly go... We see a, bit, a lot of it in the NBA about, um, you know, loading and sort of wear management on players and that sort of thing and fatiguing. And you've got to think, if you only got like nine teams and you're playing in that in the league, you think, oh, that's not too bad. But now they've got like three forms of structure. You go, oh, that's mm. that. Some players who last season didn't play that as many games as that, they are going to, they're going to feel it this year for sure. Yeah. And like I said, one of those. One of those Div 1 teams, or the, the, the guys in uh, basketball Scotland. You're call it. They're going to do it. One of them is going to do it. We've seen it in the past. Yep. You've seen it with Derby, Highline, Solent Kesh, so Jules, they knocked it. a few out. Yep. Um, history shows us it can be done. So, you know, I just think those uh, SLB teams, you know, it's, yeah. Don't, don't count them out before the game. I think I think what would be nice is that it gives everyone in the NBL, Div One, Div Two, Div Three, it gives them all a little look see and think, hang on a minute. Yeah, that's if the only thing that'd be good. If they if they did an, a preliminary round Exactly that would be even better where it's like, hang on, if we win this first round, we might get a BBL club. Oh no! Maybe it's two rounds because look, you for, couldn't you couldn't get a div three team you know, taken on an SLB, those, an SLB team in other countries. You know there are in the the British Football League, it's the FA Cup, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And it's anyone who's in a certain league or above, and it's like semi pro teams. You could have, end up playing in Wembley and playing on the biggest stage of your life. You know, and as a, a fan. You think, hang on a minute, I just play from a local team that we play on a Sunday. And I'm yeah, now we going, did it. And like, I know, and that's what I'm saying. I know you said before. It was absolutely house FC. It was just that we were we'd played football with each other for 
since we were kids, like half since we were kids, we all knew where everyone was going. And we got to the FA Cup preliminary rounds. I want to say it was like seventh round. And it was at a point where it was like, you need a stadium. And so we, I don't even think we played a home game, but it, it was at, uh, I think it was Money Fields, whatever that is. So a couple of thousand, yep. I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I'm sure we played a game. They had a little white picket fence around it. That's amazing. Ble- uh, not bleachers, like. But the fact that stadium. you can do that, it, it'd be the equivalent of someone going, right, if you turn up in your car, you do a few laps around Tesco car park. If you do all right with that, we might let you on Silverstone. Mm. And then eventually you get up to go against people. Like, what? They they could introduce but the two fact, more rounds. The fact that you could go there yeah. is the likelihood that you do. There's always someone who gets further than everyone anticipates. Because if you get two rounds before, by the time they get to that third round and the SLB teams do come into it. Yeah. The cream have, have risen to the top after two rounds, I'd yes. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to get someone who's just random, get some Div lucky three break. conference getting all the way for, for, for past two rounds. but Because you are going from semi-pro to pro. And that's the big thing, isn't it? Where you've got someone who is yeah. but training all day. I, I wanted to mention that first because mm. I think that's brilliant. Massive and we've talked that. about it before. And it is, I, I genuinely believe that's the best thing they've done so far. I cannot wait. What an amazing thing. Right, so, let's move on. We've overdone that now. Well, that that was that they said that they're going to be listening to more of the fans this year. And that's that's a great way to kick off that you're... Hey, that's what I said, because we've been talking about it quite a bit. Yep. And I, I was like, I, I wonder if, I wonder if... Well, that'd be great but, if that um, was the case. But look, Mark, you got to highlight the fact that um, they've now got... Um, broadcast production partner in yep. the league yep um so brand vox yep and emg gravity media as yep. the league's official broadcast um yep. production partner now what i would say is once you go onto their website mm-hmm. and check it out they're not mickey mouse like uh they no, no, do. No, they, they do, do all, the, all the Champions League stuff. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's good footage, and we're seeing that footage already. So you do need to register, but um, so the games are free. When you go into day, so that Dazen or Dazen, or however you want to say it, but Dazen, yeah, you do have to register, but it is free. And the broadcast partners you're talking about, they actually came together as a, a group of them. But they, like you said, they specialise in OB, like outdoor broadcasting. So. It's quite a big deal. They're just outside, I think, High Wycombe in, in sort of London way. They've got special studios, but they can do remote control of stuff from all over the place. They just need the cameras and the mics on site and they control everything else with the broadcast centrally. It's pretty clever stuff. Um, but yeah, they're getting the right infrastructure in and they're getting it so it can be out and about. It was a bit of a pain to <laughs> sign up with Dazen because it, it wants you to sign up and pay. But if you circumvent it you can actually get around it and then just watch all the games um but yeah no but i ha- i haven't watched a full game on there yet but i will do but it'll interest interesting to see the difference between that and youtube and stuff like that so one thing i'd say is some of the camera angles have been pretty good and i've been i've noticed they've followed the game quite well which is quite difficult to do, as, as you know. Well, the but, social media side of things back. I yep. love that. I love the fact that they're highlighting some plays. Um, the SLB are also doing team of the week, players of the week, and yep. all stuff. That's great. you got constant reminders of, yeah, this is awesome. So I watched three of the games this week, and the, my, own, my only real criticism, because the first week they had a few technical bumps and hitches, I watched, which they are on doubt. Production, media side of things. Yeah, it's only a small bit. There's something about the quality of the image, and I'm looking at it thinking, is that your internet? No. <laughs> it's I, I, like, it, it's your something, internet. No, it's something about it. Yeah, the hamster's not running fast enough. Um, there's something about it. I just think it's it's like sometimes it's quite misty. Now, I don't know if it's, I'd imagine. The cameraman's got to do the old hot tour on the. I hope he ain't doing that. <laughs> but it's um no i th- i think it's probably because they're quite used to playing or doing big stadiums where they've got big lighting oh so you're saying there's a glaze yeah and i think it's actually because they're overexposing the cameras because the lighting inside the arenas is probably quite low 
Like it's not as powerful as it should be. Think when you go back to it, I mean, you're going. See, I'd say it'd be the opposite. No. Because you're in sports halls. No, no. When you go. Where the lights are just on. Like yeah. it's not like Plymouth where it all goes dark. No. But when Plymouth used to go dark, it, that would all go dark and then the court would be lit. But the yeah. court, but it would be like spotlight. And just when you go see a comedian or you go see a crowd or you go see anyone playing a gig or anything like that, it's you have the contrast of the dark and then the light and then someone's up there. Mm. I think it's like a very like here. It's very uniform with the lighting, and we're gonna we're gonna change that and do. We've got some lights over here to sort that out. But doing that uniform lighting, I reckon they have to expose the cameras a bit more, which is why it might because there's a few people who've said it's it not looks what washed I thought out. You were gonna say no. I thought you were gonna talk about the commentating. Mm. I'm not. I'm not a huge. Some of it is brilliant. Some of it is great. I like it. Dan Routledge and Azania did some commentating. Yeah, yeah they're good. And that was brilliant. I, and I'm they not were, a fan of. But last last year they were they were, they were together and they they pinball off each other really yeah, really good. well and they they're really good. and obviously Dan knows his stuff. So is Azania being a former but player. I'm, so. I'm not a fan of. If you got an American commentator, you got mm. American type commentator. Yep. But there's there's one in particular I don't know his name but it's almost like is he a British guy doing an American accent mm -hmm. or is he is he actually American oh. it's like oh, if he's an American he, it's a weird accent it just doesn't come across right on, <laughs> on TV it could be uh, there's a I think there's a gentleman from the States who's lived here quite a long time so it could oh, be maybe that. it's a weird accent that he's been over here then but it just doesn't come across well remember when Madonna lived over here for a while yeah and she started speaking in a really weird accent. It was like, you're from Brooklyn. Like, what? You're a New Yorker. Like, what are you talking yeah. about? Weird? Well, so. that's the only thing I, I, I do think. Like, sometimes it's... I'm trying to think of an example. I, I think of an example. No, oh, it's a tray. And, and it's like, what? Like... I, yeah, I'd, I think I like know it's, which It's British it basketball. Mm -hmm. Do a British accent. Like, just speak like it, the audience, you know. Be. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is. I, so, I think it's very interesting. It, yeah, it makes me look and go, I could do that. No, you could do that, of course, you could quite but, easily. Um, but we'll they, see. they've had a few people who have been doing the announcing, um, who are like players and so forth. Um, and that's quite interesting for, for the, the short part. But, um, in the lo I want to say in the long haul, let's see how that pans out. But I thought of a, a a negative about doing the YouTube videos. Oh, no. I feel like I've got. I, I generally believe I have like a resting bitch face, yeah. and that's going to come across. Because when you're talking, sometimes I don't mean in my head I'm smiling, but it's, I don't in know. My, we'll see. In my head I'm smmiling but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> okay. last thing got to talk about. They've um, yes. also done the news that the the end of the season is going to end at the O2 Arena. Yeah, yeah. Go that's and, really going cool. to do that. And I gotta show this this uh, picture. Um, oh, this is all I wanna do is zoom in. All I wanna do is zoom in. Big it's up, a picture of. Uh, <laughs> guess, the, guess the film that that's from. <laughs> this is a picture of the veteran Jordan Taylor. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see it. That picture. He's got muscles on his muscles. Mm. I was yeah. like, man, what a good picture. Yeah, you'll keep that one, won't he? It's like, damn. He's only shooting a free throw or something. It's like, bloody hell, he's got muscles in his muscles. Listen, as long as that free throw went in, it doesn't matter. I'm sure it did. I'm <laughs> sure it did. Anyway, so look, that's where I wanted to start. All right, you're going to crack on with the... Uh, yeah, I was just going to just... Round two. Round yeah. two of the trophy, Mark. I was just going to go through it really quickly because it's just... I've seen... I saw three of the games this week. Can I just say, look, Pepsi... Don't have any of that crap. We took just comes off. Done. Does, does that make you happy, does it? It's a choice of a new generation. I don't know if they still do that, do they? I don't know. I knew it was the did it, done it, liked it, loved it. That was the Pepsi Max one, wasn't it? But I don't remember any others. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Crack on. Do so, these games. Manchester and Cheshire. Um, Cheshire won, but hey. yeah, they did. But I thought it was in, it's it's weird seeing the players, and there's some players who are not there. So you're looking there, thinking, "Where's Aaron Rye?" Yeah. <laughs> and 
uh, I will say uh, Skylar White was actually looking really lean. He's looked like he's really, um, I don't know, maybe put some work in the off season or whatever. He looked like he'd really leaned up. Um, very, very mobile, which is it was fun to see. The only thing I'd say with that game was, I think it was like 10 points. I want to check my notes. Yeah, 10 point victory. Um, but that was Q3. They were down up in that first half and you thought, oh, this is going to, you're going to see Manchester, they were controlling it. And um, the new Manchester kit, it's kind of growing on me now, that whole MCR thing. Yeah. But. How, was this the game? It was um, Cameron Christen and Cameron Holden. Yep. Went for 41 points between them. Uh, yeah, I'm I think sure. I did, yeah. Was it that game? Uh, oh, it might be. I uh, know. Oh, yes, I think it was. Cam Holden, Cam Christian. They were on fire. Um, Kristen, there's one great one. He drives inside and he's like, he's going up for a like, boom, passes it out to Holden. But isn't it weird? Seeing, drives in. I love it. Seeing like Cam. They're so strong. Cam Holden, MVP for the game. And you go, well, that'd have been Aaron Rye last year. Or you got the Quincy Riddle. Hey, he, he dominated. I think he got, what, 26 points? Uh, uh, Is that right? 25 points. And eight from 11 on shooting. That's pretty good, isn't it? He did but, their right. They did their right. It was just weird. They're working. Those two are working really well together. They're working well together. It's weird seeing Cheshire in that colour kit. And it's weird seeing them in, because um, it was probably a blue kit. But it's weird seeing them without some familiar faces, should we say. So that was kind of good. But it was good to see the basketball back. Um, if you said Cheshire and Manchester last year and Cheshire won, you wouldn't be shocked, really, would you? So you could argue it wouldn't be so but Manchester controlled that first half it was only in Q3 that they really I won't say they let Cheshire in but they let them flip but anyway next game I watched was Newcastle Caledonia and that was brilliant and that wasn't just because Keith messaged me and said hey I'm sitting near the front for that one keep your eye out for me that's the top of the table clash isn't it that is when, the when, clash. when the league starts there's there's like four teams you're looking at going where we had that or oh, who's going to get second last mm -hmm. year you're looking at this gear going they're all going for there's the title. powerhouses now like, yeah we haven't got a team that's running away with it and it ended being 93 88 and if and if you said that went either way yeah and it was two points then two points three point lead one point lead that's what that was the game the whole way through newcastle secured that victory and i'm sure they'd be pretty grateful that they did because uh, I think they've got Caledonia coming up next week. So that'll be a good little rematch. Um, but Newcastle won that on turnovers. 100%. Caledonia were just dropping that ball all over the place. 19 turnovers. I mean, that's... Yeah, it was. 19 turnovers to 8 turnovers. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what it was. How... That, that was the biggest can, difference. Can in you the imagine game. like 19 turnovers? 19 at what turnovers, point as a coach do you go... <laughs> like you're going... And it's like, they they just keep throwing the ball away. But the thing is, you look, there's a turnover, that's two points down the other end of the court. Yep. It, at times, is an easy layup. Yeah. But that that was the, I mean, we always said, you know, good defense is the most important thing. But you've got to keep hold of the ball, surely, in the first place, more than anything else. But anyway, that was, you know, an interesting game. The next day, Manchester are playing, and they're playing Caledonia. So Manchester have just come back off of a, a loss from Cheshire. Caledonia have just come off of a loss from playing against Newcastle. So both teams into that game were like, we, one of us is going to win. 87-91. Again, let's go back last season. Manchester and Caledonia, would it be a four-point game? No. So I think, even though Manchester have lost those two games, they really could take credit from... They had two hard games that they played and they, you know, they really sort of dug in, to, to be perfectly honest. Um, I will say... They got some home games coming up. Caledonia, they had a, was it 13 for two run in the fourth quarter. Nice. I mean, there, there's just, and Patrick Whelan, he's doing what he does best. But I, I love that. I just thought whoever wrote that in terms of the scheduling, what a genius. Because they've got two teams that have just played games and then they're playing again. But the fact that they both lost meant they both were like, we want a win. Yeah. And and 
that's what I think echoes through all of these games. A lot of the teams were really playing hard. Um, do you know what echoes for me? No. Nope. Home court advantage. Yeah. That's what echoes in, in round two. Yep. Uh, just if... I don't know if it's the injection of new players and you've got... You know, we've seen a lot of players leave. Yes. Since the BBL broke up and then this yeah. SLB. But... Maybe it is home court advantage. Looks like definitely in round two played a, a, a signif was a significant factor. Well, look, Manchester played both their games at home and they were within three, four points. Uh, sorry, four points of Caledonia. This Ten is round two. Yeah, round two. Ten points they were shy from Cheshire, but they were both games in Manchester. Whereas, and you know, you look at Cheshire, they got a road win. Caledonia, they got a road win. But then if you look at the old... Oh, uh, so the way you've written this, you've written it so the winning team is first on your notes. Yeah. Well, that's stupid, isn't it? No, I just did it because it made it more <laughs> logical for me. <laughs> I looked at that when I on every... I didn't realise that, but it's just the way you've written it. You've written home... Well, just look, look at the schedule at the top. It's right there, look. Home, away. <clears throat> home, away. Home, okay. away. I ignore what I said about home Ignore corner. lies. All lies. Well, Newcastle got their home win, so there is that. But Cheshire versus Sheffield, I did not watch this game, and I wish I had. I've got to watch it. I've got to watch it before tomorrow. Sheffield versus Cheshire, mm -hmm. you miss a great game, Mark. Yeah. And you got to talk about Prentice Nixon. He was great last With season. With 39 points, 8 assists, and 7 rebounds, Mark! <laughs> That's... That was the that was the highlight. That's the first one I've done for this season. Yeah, Nixon's on fire. That's ridiculous. He, I mean, he scored some big points. Yeah. Let me see what I can find last for you. Year. There were some big points he made last season. Let me see what I can find for you. Um, and that was a home game for them, wasn't it? Oh no, there's a way. That was Cheshire. Were home. So once again, it is not home court advantage. There's been home and away's wins. My writing is really bad on this line. I can see that. Oh, I should really improve it. All a work in progress. Oh, yeah. Some nicks and highlights. That's what you need to get up on the screen, Mark. Yeah, I can do. He's a smooth player. But these highlights and everything that you see on, online, all the media, they're doing some really, really... That's why I was saying about camera angles. They're sharing some really, really good shots yeah, that are actually it being made. It feels close. Yes. It feels close. That's yeah, what it yeah. feels like. So all of these games. Now, this is my only gripe and you'll see on my notes, I've actually taken the screenshot and you've got, those are the four games that were done for the North. These are the two games for the South. Oh, hang on. Before you go any further, you've got to talk about Sheffield rookie, Jack Grews. Oh, yeah. Number 33. Was that his game? 33. 34. I think his Instagram's Jack Grew's 33. Oh. But he plays 34. <laughs> uh, look, he, he's he's all right. He's a good player. Um, let me see if I can find some highlights for you. You find some highlights for me. Sound fun. He, 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 so, he pl was playing really well. Well, while you're saying that, I'm just going to say... There you go. Hey, here we go. You see that? Oh, you're going to do it that way. Yeah. Yeah, I saw those highlights. Handy. Handy kid to have. And this is his first season, isn't it? Yeah, he's a rookie. Hey, he's he's not playing like he's a rookie. No. He's playing like he's a 10-year vet. Wouldn't go that far, but yeah, he's playing well. He's doing all right. Right, the South fixtures too. So the South fixtures, Let's there's crack two. on. There's two, but here's the important bit. When you go online and you have a look at these fixtures... It makes it very clear, and that's why I've included it on just on the notes. You can see it very clearly. This is the disparity between North and South. That's how it seems to be linked, that you have more teams in the North of the country than you do in the South at the moment because we lost Plymouth. And it makes it look quite clear when you have... There's no doubled matches this week, so they are only every team played each other. Whereas, as you saw in the North, they actually got an extra round of some other games in. So Newcastle played twice, Manchester played twice, Caledonia played twice in the North, whereas in the South, they didn't do that. And it becomes apparent when you look at next week's, can you see next week's fixture right there? 
and next week's fixture that oh, yeah. there's, there's only one game in the south it's like ah oh. so it's crying out for some southern teams but luckily with this little injection that you were talking about in the cup you've got teams like Essex Rebels um Reading Rockets it's like they're all southern teams so it suddenly balances a lot of things up really a hemelstorm really really into it so that's why it's so exciting for us because you go you can see more of a uh, uh, not a disparity that sort of disappearance but anyway I thought you were going to fly through the things quick you said we're going to go through it quick we are going through it quick we've spoken to it for 20 minutes wow what can we say we love the game Look, can, I, can I show them what I'm playing with uh check this out Mark made this oh <laughs> <laughs> There's a table between us, so I, I, I didn't know what was going on there. It's ah. <laughs> great, isn't it? Is that what you've been sat there fiddling with? Yeah. Thank God. I, I was, right, let's crack I was on. Worrying. But Bristol Fires were playing Surrey. Watch that one. That was a brilliant game. Really, really love Surrey's kit. I'm really liking the green, which is odd because, you know, it looks like a Boston kit. It looks like an old school Boston kit. Um, Bristol deserved that win. They definitely deserved that win. Some great performances from Surrey, but Bristol definitely deserved that win. There's no question of that one. Um, but I personally would have liked to have seen um, a bit more, I won't say not rotation in the players. I think there was some moments where there was a few more. Some people have extra minutes they maybe couldn't, didn't need to have. Um, but I'm going to give out a shout out to Kendall Lewis because there's a really good play that he makes at the end of it. And I don't know if you saw... Are you going to show this one or...? I, will, I can't do it right this second. I You're wish still I working on that one. Well, I can, but... you got the same coming up though, haven't you? Well, we have got something coming up, but I can't do it at the moment because I haven't got double screens. So, Kendall Lewis gets a really important block right at the very end. But what people don't talk about or they didn't really make a much bigger deal about it, which I thought was important, was right before that play at the end, he just hit two free throws to make the difference. <laughs> you and bloody Listen, free throws. I love it. Jeez. But this was the game. Was that, It was like a three-point It was like a two three point game. He hit the free throws, got them all, and that secured the gap. And then he went and got a block, which stopped with 12 seconds left. He went and got immediately bang block straight away stop them getting any chance of getting a footing in the game and you go everyone's just oh it's the block that sorted it. it was like no the block was massively important but he hit those two free throws when it was a real crunch time like if he'd have missed both of them they still had 12 seconds free throws win games yeah it's all you gotta say mark free throws win games no, done brilliant. right last game of the week <clears throat> london lions versus leicester riders I think we found the wooden spoon award, haven't we? <laughs> That's out of order. No, it's not. Bit every single person, every single person on social media without fail is delighting in the fact that London are getting whipped around. Hey, look, they were doing the whipping last year. Exactly. So, And I think that's why. Now, it's funny that Leicester did that because Leicester got battered by London last year quite spectacularly. So it's funny that... A lot of those London players have gone now, but the Leicester players are still there. So um, that'll probably be really good for them. But 60, was it? 66, 89. Look, Aaron Rye, we saw what kind of player he is yep. last year. Um, let's let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Yep. It's a new team. 23 point victory. Massive shout out to Jalen Hunter for like 20, 21 points. I mean, that's... I'd love to get 21 points in a game. Yeah. It'd be amazing. But yeah, so that was a really good week. But coming up, you've got Caledonia and Newcastle, Sheffield versus Caledonia, then Cheshire versus Newcastle. That's all coming up this week. And in the south, Surrey versus Bristol. Okay. So cool. There we go. There's gonna be some good games. It's almost coming to an end. Well, it's round weird. three. This four. is round three. So there's five rounds in the trophy. Oh, yeah, five rounds. Five yeah, rounds yeah. of the trophy. So this is this week is going to be like the midpoint of the trophy, effectively. And then anyone on a break? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I was going to Leicester, and I was like, yes, I'm going <laughs> to Leicester. I'm going to see that. I'm going to Bristol. I'll be there. Brilliant. And it's like, hey, on, they're on a two week break. What's going on? Yeah, they do a break, and then at the same, t then when they come back, like the championship, that you're away, 
when the championship starts because the championships hey Leicester have got yeah this 90 pound VIP experience I'm like yes I will try that yes I will we've got to go up there Mark try that for a VIP yeah lovely that'd be great Anyone in Leicester, give us a shout. We'll, uh, you play for you go out, pay for a meal. That's I'll play for them. Yeah, of course I'll play for them. Right. You need some free throws banging in. I'm your man. Are we ending the show there yep. and then well, doing another one about the NBA and stuff like that? We're we just rolling on. Just roll on. Because no one's going to survive this long. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. That is the end of this part. But do not worry, because coming soon is the second part of this episode, and it will be available soon. 